Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the link reaction. You should then be able to explain how the link reaction is an example of oxidative decarboxylation. In the last video we looked at glycolysis, which is the first stage of respiration. We saw that glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm and does not require oxygen. During glycolysis, the 6-carbon glucose molecule is broken down in a series of reactions to form two molecules of pyruvate, which has three carbon atoms. During glycolysis, we produce a net yield of two ATP molecules and two molecules of reduced NAD. Now the two pyruvate molecules produced in glycolysis still contain a great deal of stored energy. So in the later stages of respiration, this energy is released. Now what happens next depends on the level of oxygen. In the absence of oxygen, anaerobic respiration takes place in the cytoplasm. And we'll be looking at anaerobic respiration in detail in later videos. However, if oxygen is present, then the cell carries out aerobic respiration. And in this case, all of the remaining reactions of respiration take place in the mitochondria. I'm showing you a mitochondrion here. Remember that mitochondria have a double membrane, and the internal region of a mitochondrion is called the mitochondrial matrix. In the next stage of respiration, the pyruvate molecules produced by glycolysis are actively transported from the cytoplasm into the mitochondrial matrix. At this point, the pyruvate molecules take part in the link reaction. I'm showing you the link reaction here. Now, in order to understand this, I need to show you the structures of the key molecules. You don't need to learn these, but it will help you to see what's taking place. OK, so we start with pyruvate, which contains three carbon atoms. The pyruvate now reacts with a molecule called coenzyme A. Now, coenzyme A is a complex molecule, so I'm showing this as a box. Now the pyruvate molecule splits. A two carbon group from the pyruvate is added to the coenzyme A, and I'm showing that as blue. This forms the molecule acetyl coenzyme A. The remaining one carbon part of the pyruvate leaves as a molecule of carbon dioxide, and I'm showing that as yellow. At the same time, an oxidation reaction takes place, forming a molecule of reduced NAD. So at the end of the link reaction, we've got three products. We have one molecule of acetyl coenzyme A, one molecule of carbon dioxide, and one molecule of reduced NAD. Now there are several important facts about the link reaction that you need to remember. Firstly, glycolysis produces two pyruvate molecules for each molecule of glucose. So the link reaction takes place twice for each molecule of glucose entering respiration. This means that per glucose, the link reaction produces two molecules of acetyl coenzyme A, two molecules of carbon dioxide, and two molecules of reduced NAD. Secondly, during the link reaction, a molecule of carbon dioxide is released from the pyruvate. When carbon dioxide is removed from a molecule, scientists call this a decarboxylation reaction. At the same time, an oxidation reaction takes place, producing reduced NAD. So because we have an oxidation reaction plus a decarboxylation reaction, scientists call this oxidative decarboxylation. And lastly, you'll notice that the link reaction does not require oxygen. OK, now at this point, the acetyl coenzyme A produced in the link reaction enters the next stage of respiration. This is called the Krebs cycle, and we look at the Krebs cycle in the next video.